The last trick. Oh. 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 <laughs> but here we go. We have three, three different colored balls. Three different colored balls. We have a red ball. We're going to slide it on from this pole here. We have a purple ball. We're going to slide that one into the pole and a green ball. Now, as you can see, purple is blue. <laughs> Little colored line that I can't hear. But so the red ball. The red ball, that's going to represent God the Father. God the Father, the creator of all. He created you and I. If you're blinking and breathing and you have a pulse today, he created you. The green ball over here represents you and I. Represents you and I. And this bluish purple ball in the middle <laughs> represents something that is separating us from God. As you can see, we can't get to God there. This ball can't come off this pole. It's stuck on there. Can't go around, get to him. However, this purple blue ball represents sin. Represents sin. Sin is what separates us from God the Father. Again, remember, uh, we talked about sin, no matter how big, no matter how small. Sin is, we cannot enter into heaven with sin. So how exactly does one get to heaven? How does one get to God the Father with sin in the way? Well, I'm going to read some Bible verses here in a moment. But in the Old Testament, in the Bible, they, uh, they would have the sacrificing of animals. The sacrificing of animals. And it was always the shedding of blood for the remission of sins. Now, even in the, the New Testament, the age of grace, we need the shedding of blood to take away our sins. But God looked ahead in his infinite wisdom and saw that you know, we can't be doing the animals. So he gave one holy lamb, one ultimate sacrifice, and that's Jesus Christ, his son. The Bible talks about Jesus Christ coming down on earth. God sent his only son into the world, but the Bible says that his own did not receive him. See, they, they, they didn't believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah to come. They didn't believe that he was the son of God. So what did they do? They nailed him on a cross. They crucified him. Killed him. He shed his blood. Now, the shedding of blood is what takes away the sins, that ultimate sacrifice. You see, sin is something that we all have and we all have to get rid of, and we can't sacrifice anymore, but Jesus Christ paid the sacrifice for us. He shed his blood for you and I. Now, after he had died, they placed him in a grave for three days and three nights. Now, the wonderful thing, we talk about death, that's horrible. We talk about the grave, that's horrible, but here's the great part. You know, his name wasn't on that tombstone. Not at all. Why not? Because it wasn't his grave. He wasn't staying. He was only hanging out for three days, three nights, and then up from the grave, Jesus Christ arose. Now, as wonderful as the cross and the shedding of blood is, it's the resurrection, the resurrection that gives us life. Why? Because Jesus, through his resurrection, defeated death, defeated hell, and gave us the same opportunity to have victory over death and hell as well. Now look at what the picture we have here. We have the blood covering our sin. We have over here a way. Jesus Christ made the way. It says in the Bible, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If Jesus Christ, if, 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 if there was another way, if there was another way to get to heaven, let's say... You could buy your way to heaven. Let's say, look, uh, I'm going to take, I don't even have my wallet with me. I'll take my wallet out, and I'm going to give the church $100 every single service. I'm going to give to the poor every time I see someone with a cup out. I'm going to do the best that I very can, and then God, he's not going to turn me away, right? I mean, I've been, I've been such a good person. Uh, in, in, in the Bible, it tells us, that at the day of judgment, some are going to call out, Lord, Lord, and he's going to say, depart from me. Why? Because you have never trusted Jesus Christ. Well, I go to a church, I go to a church, and I'm there every service. That's wonderful, too. But let me ask you, silly illustration, we've probably heard it many times. If you were to put yourself in, say, a garage for about 30 years, would you come out a car? Would you, if you put yourself inside of a refrigerator, would you come out as a gallon of milk? Just because you go to church doesn't make you a Christian. You might come out as ice. You're going to come out as an ice cube. <laughs> we must 
accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, believe in our heart. We'll get to the Bible verse here in a moment. I want to read just a, a handful of Bible verses here. And if you have more questions and you have any prayer requests, again, please, 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 at the end of this, uh, talk to someone. That's why we're here. In the book of Romans, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I talked about sin. I talked about how we're all sinners. I talked about how we have big sin, little sin, and so on. But God sees all sin equal. Now, at the end of that verse, it says, Short of the glory of God. What does that mean, short of God's glory? Young folks, you're going to relate with me on this one. When I was your age, knee high to a duck, went to the amusement park, right? And I'm watching these people going up and down these roller coasters, having a high old time. And I'm going to get on that roller coaster. And I'm going to get on that roller coaster. And I'm waiting in line. Six hours later, waiting in line. I get up to the front. I'm next to be on a roller coaster. And the guy says, you got to be this tall. And I'm only this tall. Oh! Walk of shame past everybody who's taller than me. Because they get to ride the roller coaster. Well, see, with sin, we can't be tall enough to get to heaven. With sin, we can't be good enough to get to heaven because, again, God is righteous, God is holy, God is pure. But with Jesus Christ, he gives us the uh, elevated shoes, the platform shoes. He gives us a lift so we can get on the roller coaster. With Jesus Christ, he makes us good enough. Why? He Amen. takes away our sin. He makes the way clean and pure. That's what it means fall short of the glory of God. In Romans 6, verse 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. A wage, a wage. If, if someone was to, um, say, uh, cut the grass outside, I'm going to pay you a dollar an hour to cut the grass. That's a wage. That's your payment. Well, the price of sin is death. The price of sin is death in hell. But, it says, it says, but the gift of God is eternal life. Yeah. Eternal life is forever. Live forever. That little E word, eternal, means forever. Not just until we sin the next time. No, no. The moment you accept Jesus Christ, you become that changed creature. You become that butterfly, if you will. And you are a butterfly forever for eternal life forever. Accept Jesus Christ now. Live forever with him. Last Three verses for us today. And I want you to think about your heart. I want you to think about where you're going to go when you die. From the youngest soul all the way to the oldest. We're all going to die. I was not born and raised in a Christian home. Um, a lot of the friends that I ran around with are now dead because of the lifestyle that we had. Um, drugs and alcohol, suicide and so on. Um, without getting all the details, not all my friends are around anymore. But by God's grace, when someone showed me the truth, now even if I were to die, I would live forever with Jesus Christ in heaven. I'm, I can't say that for sure about my friends. This is the most important decision you can make. How does one truly get saved? I mean, we're talking about the blood, we're talking about sacrifice, we're talking about the cross, the grave. What do I got to do? God gave us the word. It says that, uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Yeah. That's it? That's what the Bible says, and I don't even have my glasses on. It says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Look, most people are only this far this far from getting saved. Why? Because they believe God. They know there's a God. They know they're the creator of all. They don't believe all this evolution stuff because you got to have more faith in evolution than to have faith in God, if you ask me. But they're this far because they won't take the thoughts and put it to their heart and say, Lord, I believe in my heart that you sent Jesus Christ to die. All you got to do is trust Jesus in your heart. Well, Brother Steve, you don't know what I've done. You don't know the sin that I have. You know, there is a bunch of words, a bunch of words in the Bible that start with a W. And I love those words. I love those words because no matter what sin I committed, no matter what sin you committed, you can call on the name of the Lord. What do you mean? It says in verse 13 of Romans chapter 10, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Doesn't matter how rich you are. 
doesn't matter how poor you are, don't matter how old you are, don't matter how young you are, you call in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and he will save you now. Yes. The question is, have you done that? The moment we call on Jesus, we ask him to save us, we get to be with him forever. Now, now is the time where I ask for everyone just to look into your own heart. So what we're going to do, young folks, here we go. Ready? Everyone put your hands up here. Wave around like you just don't care. Don't hit the person next to you. Put your hands up. All right, now our hands are folded, right, kind of in a prayer position. As we bring our hands down, let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Nobody looking, nobody peeking. Why?